Today, I'm delighted to welcome to Yak Wax Lips, one of Adventure Games' most well-known names. He's the creator of the Blackwell series and Unavowed, plus a publisher for games such as The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow and Gemini Roo. Please welcome to the channel Wadget Eye Games, also known as Dave Gilbert. Hello, Dave. Hi. Nice yes. to be back. Yes, it's it's uh, it's been a while. It's been several years coming. <laughs> yeah, we've we've been trying to schedule this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we um we first uh, discussed uh, yourself and Old Skies way back in September 2020, and as we record this, it's now February 2024. So a good three and a half years ago, and a lot has changed. Some of it hasn't changed, but a lot has changed. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, but first off, um, yeah, I mentioned there Old Skies. This is your your new creation, which will be um, coming at some point. So tell us a little bit about Old Skies. Okay. Um, I have yet to still, like, pare this down into, like, one sweet little sound bite. So uh, I'm, I'm working on the, the one or two sentence elevator pitch, which is it's a time travel story. Uh, where you are a um, basically a tour guide to the past, where you take people into the past, and nothing ever goes wrong. That's a lie. <laughs> a lot of things go wrong, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and you have to fix them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Now you released the demo um, eighteen months ago. Maybe was it at the next fest? It was um, next fest twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, two two, two years ago now. Um, how was Gosh, that experience yeah. for you releasing it for the first time? Oh, it was nice um, because, A, I hadn't released anything in a long time, and so at least nothing of my own, and it was nice to, you know, get that get that dopamine hit of people playing my stuff. Um, but it, it was nice. I'd never done Next Fest before. I never released a demo like that before. Um, so that was an interesting experience. I, I kind of went a little crazy and added the voice acting, and, you know, I even added commentary and bloopers because why not? <laughs> um, but it was nice uh, just kind of getting – it, it was just getting getting that initial buzz uh, on this project that I had been working on, excuse me, for so long. And uh, it, it was an interesting experience. Um, of course, now it has been, uh, you know, 18 months since and people are wondering where the game is. And it's like, all right, it's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like maybe I didn't capitalize off that, off that hype and momentum as well as I could have. But it was nice to like get that feedback and just early buzz from uh, releasing the demo, especially during an event like next fest, because more people would have looked at it than they otherwise wouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I saw your talk at adventure X uh, last year, in fact, the year before about um, your creation of old skies and how yeah. you almost threw it away. You almost <laughs> chipped it yep. away, but I, th I think I talked to you just before I did that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it was around about the same time. So, how are your feelings on on how it's gone since that talk and up to now? Do you do you see um, is it complete as a story? Because at that time you were still working on the next story, essentially. Um, yeah. How is how has that process gone since since that talk you did? Oh, much better. Like it's uh, uh, it's the story is complete. I mean, the game is fully playable from the beginning to the end. The last chapter has a lot of like missing dialogue, uh, which I have to fill in, but it's like completely playable from start to finish. Uh, so I'd say it went pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, We're testing it now. Um, there's a, still a lot of art assets to be made. Uh, there's a lot of like empty dialogue bits and placeholder areas to fill in, um, but it's playable from start to finish, which just by itself is a huge milestone. Um, when I typed the end and I, I put my little placeholder credit screen in, it was just the best feeling because, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, it's it's been a long road. This has been the longest project I've ever worked on. And I say that with every project, Every project turns out to be to be the longest project, and I always swear that the next one will be shorter. Um, but so we'll see. <laughs> I'm hoping the next one will be shorter, or at <laughs> least full of less strife. Because I think starting this game just before um, COVID hit was uh, it didn't do it any favors because uh, I was very distracted and very stressed, and that is not a good. Um, that's not a good recipe for doing any kind of creative work. Uh, so it, it got, uh, there were a lot of false starts, but once I finally got going, 
is just been you know firing on all cylinders ever since there there's been moments where it's like oh i'm not sure if i'm it's more the usual design stress of i'm not sure how to make this specific puzzle or moment work but that's significantly better than i'm not sure how to make this whole game work uh so i when i when i threw it away and started over i was pretty sure that the new design and structure worked it was the individual moments as I got to each one that I had to make sure worked. And uh, and they do. I think they do. Brilliant. Good to, good to hear. Now, just before I press record on this interview, we were talking about... Oh, the... I've been giving away the gold for free? <laughs> You've been, you haven't been recording? <laughs> no, no, no this, I recorded all of this. But oh, oh, before okay. we started recording, we spoke about a certain Sally Beaumont. Um, oh, which oh, was the, oh. the last interview <laughs> the last interview we did and i said we'll come to, to sally because she's um she's a big part of old skies she is the main character she is. um how has having someone uh like sally on board um has she shaped fear any differently than if another actress would have been in or do you write the character and then um and then you know anyone could come in and, and try it their way is, is the lines already written or has, has sally shifted it a little bit from the beginning even before the beginning like uh the jam game that i made in 2019 even when i wrote that alternate version of fia back then i always had her voice in mind like i i knew that i wanted her to be in it i've always wanted to work with her we were friends for many years and i'd always wanted to work with her and i specifically wrote that character for her and so i've always had her voice in my head and she's actually been a huge i mean she is fia like i whenever i write a line i hear her voice in my head saying it and we've talked a lot about the character we have you know gone back and forth she's been a sounding board for a lot of ideas she's just a really great creative person has a lot of great thoughts about narrative and voice acting and stuff like that and and so she's she's been a huge help overall like she's just uh she's just been great and she's actually done some um done a bunch of uh script consultancy i, I guess is the word um I, I'm not necessarily narrative consultant but she's done like some writing on the game uh so she's she's actually um doing some right now on one of the sections of the game so she's she's been helping me out a lot uh so yeah i can't i can't thank her enough yeah, yeah, she's wonderful. She she mm-hmm. had high praise for you as well in our interview. I'll link I'll link that interview uh, down in the in the description. The feeling um, is very mutual. The feeling yes. is very mutual. <laughs> uh, now another person who is vital to the uh, the old guys um, game is obviously your your artist, and Ben. He he's gone in a different direction to the pixel art that Wadji Eye is known as. Now was that your decision? Did you have a big meeting about this? It, How did that no, not really. He he it was his decision. Uh, he wanted to try um, a higher resolution. And I said, okay, why don't we do, um, I don't know what the next step up was, like uh, the the one like resolution below the one we're at now. And he said, no, I want to go even higher. Okay, let's, let's go even higher. And I admit that at first I was very resistant to, not resistant to him trying, but when he showed me his initial drafts and the, the first few screens, my first thought was like, this is so, such a radical departure, such a radical departure. Like it didn't, like, this is not our style. This is not, you know, and, uh, but the more I see it, when I see it in motion, you see it just how smooth everything is. Cause he's not, he's not half-assing it. That's not Ben. He's not like creating these high def characters and then tweening them. He's not, they're not tweened. You can tell when something is tweened. That looks like old Flash animation. This is all hand drawn, all hand animated. It's beautiful, um, and he's you know he's putting everything he's got into everything. I mean, the only the only downside is that it takes a bit longer for him to for him to make everything. Yeah. But the results are, are fantastic. Um, we might not necessarily keep that resolution for follow up games. I think for he's got an idea for something he wants to do next. So he's actually gonna um take the reins on designing the next Wajada game after Old Skies. And he wants to go down a resolution and, and that's fine. You know, uh there's no reason why uh we can't mix things up. Um just because we we move forward doesn't mean we can't go back a little bit. Uh it's whatever works for the game. And I, I think this style definitely works for this game. Yeah. It looks fantastic. When when those um when those screenshots screenshots dropped three and a half years ago now that's, that's the reason we, uh, we had you on the first time uh yeah there was a big like oh my god it's not pixel art but now you see it and it's i, I follow ben on twitter as well and he, he posts for things on there and just they oh, look yeah. amazing very and he'd been working on nighthawks for about a year or two before that so he was very comfortable with high def art 
and evidently not high def art that animated. Um, but he, it's funny how like he's doing this amazing high def art, but most of the animations are quite mundane because it's like, okay, make this character, make Fia shrug in seven different outfits, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And so he's been doing a lot of very, you know, kind of boring stuff like that. But then lately I've had, you know, him do things like, you know, make this character's shoes explode, you know, stuff like that. So he's, he's, there's a, there's a bit of fun animations in there. Um, but for the most part, it's like, he's got doing the, the most high def art he's ever done for Wajidai, but it, it's kind of just very mundane characters and locations, but it's Ben, he's trying to, he, he he's, it's his job to make it interesting yeah. and make it, give it a visual something. And that, that is why I hired and need someone like Ben. Cause I don't think that way. I don't think visually, I think story wise. And there's this, this is one location where something really dramatic happens, but it's inside an office. And I was trying to move it somewhere more dramatic, like on top of a bridge or a rooftop or a balcony, but I couldn't justify it. And so, but Ben said, don't worry, I'll make it dramatic. And he did. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's why I'm, I'm grateful to Ben as well for everything he does. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm really excited. Um, now, obviously, those, um, Ben, you've got Sally and yourself, um, a lot more um, uh, voice actors involved. Um, mm -hmm. How you, you said it's written from start to finish. You've got the last few bits to do at the end chapter. Um, mm -hmm. As a non-developer myself, I am one of these people that's like, well, it must be done then. It must be out in the next month or so. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as a developer, you're going, no, 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 no. So, um, I wish. What um is is there a a penciled in at all time frame? I'm not going to narrow it down to a date because I'm mm. I'm realistic. But I don't know. I here here's what I think. I mean, Nighthawks will definitely probably be next, um, and that is going to hopefully come out sometime this year. Um, we uh, that, that we don't we can't nail down a specific date yet, but for for Old Skies, I think at the rate I'm going. If I'm not done by the end of the year, it'll be extremely close. I don't, I, I can't say yet because I want to focus on Nighthawks first. Yeah. Um, but I, I think early 2025 at the earliest, at the latest rather, at the latest. It won't be any longer than that. I know it's 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 been a long road, but at the same time, I've also gotten sidetracked by other projects. We did Strangeland, we did Hub's Barrow, we're doing Nighthawks. So it's like, three or four months or, you know, up to six months at a pop where I'm doing, yeah. doing, working on something else. So it's not like I've been idle. It's just, it, it does slow down old skies quite a bit, but yeah. that's what we have to do to get more games out or more money and keep the lights on. So uh, I'm personally okay with it. The fans might not be, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, that's a really good, um, a really good segue actually into my next couple of questions. Cause it's all to do about the publishing side of, of what you do. Um, Nighthawks. Uh, it's, it's more of um, a visual novel is the best way to describe it. It's yeah. very much uh, like sunless sea or, you know, fallen London. It's that style of game, which Richard has worked on. Yeah. He's worked on Sunless Sea and Sunless Sky, and I think he did some work on Fallen London. I'm not sure. I know he wrote a parody called Fallen Swindon. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he worked on actual Fallen London, but he gets that style. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a mix of that with like the the vampire bloodlines aesthetic, um, with uh, with like a bit of like Slay the Spire combat thrown in um, for the for the combat sections. So. Yeah excuse me it's a um mix of a lot of things but it's it's very very richard yeah and um how did that cross your path is that something that he came to you with or did you notice he was working on that and, and approach him oh he came he came to me uh and it was just when i was um gearing up for the unavowed launch and he he came to me with this he had actually approached ben about the idea um and so and i said okay fine you know yeah he wanted to do a kickstarter for it and at the time i remember thinking like i was my brain was just to so taken up with unavowed launch that i thought like i do not have the time to do a campaign but at the same time i'd love to work with you and i'd love for this to happen um if i give you like my password and stuff because i think at the time you had to be an american company to do a kickstarter and he wanted he was hoping to work with Ben anyway. So we thought, hey, and, and you know, we know each other. We've been friends for a long time. Um, I love his writing. You know, I've always loved his work. And um, 
we figured if I wanted to publish it anyway, I might as well have the Kickstarter under my name. Yeah. And so I said, yeah, that's fine. So we did, we did the Kickstarter was under my name. Uh, I gave him access to it. So all the updates say it's from Dave Gilbert, even though it's just him. Yeah. So, you know, I wouldn't be a proper publisher if I didn't take credit for everyone else's work. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so he basically did all of that. And I gave him my Twitter password as well. So all the tweets promoting it, it was all him. Because I had just launched on Avowed and I was exhausted. I'm like, I can't even think about gearing, <laughs> doing something like this now. Um, so, yeah, he he did all the promotion for it. He did all the Kickstarter updates. He did everything. And it succeeded. Um, so then, you know, we had to make the game. And so, you know, we got uh, paid for like half a year of Ben's time and about a year's worth of Richard's time. Very optimistic time frame. Um, of course, we didn't expect uh, a global pandemic to hit which distracted everybody yeah. and um although that was like a year later you know the pandemic hit but still um it just that just slowed things down to a crawl and it, it's been a it's been difficulty getting getting uh, caught up to to where he should have been and uh it was it's a, a much bigger much more ambitious game um as, as games always are they're always yeah. bigger than you expect them to be. They'll always take longer than you expect them to be. And this game is very big, very ambitious. So many branching paths, so many different choices, so many ways it could go, so many companion characters. Oh my God, there's just so many characters that will follow you and talk to you and so many different paths. It's amazing that he didn't break his brain making this game. Um, it's it's an, it's an incredible achievement. And it's funny. It's funny as hell. Richard is such a great writer. Um, it's dramatic. It's funny. It's it's heart, you know, it's heartfelt. It's sincere. It's so many things. Uh, I can't wait for people to play it. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. It's, um, yeah, it's not something that uh, we expected from you. Because, I mean, what's your games? You expect the Pixel Art Adventure game. So this is is really exciting. Um, and now Pixel Art Adventure games and, and your publishing background as well. Um, when you when we last spoke three years ago, um, you were working on Old Skies and Nighthawks as well. You, did you expect to have something like the excavation of Hobbs Barrow come across your path? Uh, no, not at that time. Like that that was something that I, I I I sort of approached them. It's it's very weird how that happened. I played the demo and I just fell in love with just how it recreated that time and place and i was very i was familiar with some of cloak and dagger stuff i hadn't played everything they'd done but i know i was familiar with their work and um i remember the the legend of hand uh, i don't know why i felt the need to do that but um <laughs> and uh, i knew uh sumatra sumatra was like i i know that was the only one i had played because i was familiar with their work and i remember thinking this is so leagues beyond legend of hand this is yeah. this is so great and it really having been to england many times you know married to a brit go there a lot her my in-laws live in one of those little villages um it recreates it so well and often when you think victorian you think street urchins and factories and you know shopkeeps and you know cute dickens like boys and things yeah. like that cockney accents and this was such a unique spin on that you know a victorian era game story set in like a village there was this wonderful timeless quality about it. And I loved that demo. Just visually, everything was so, so great. And, but the one thing I, I didn't have was voice acting. And I, I wrote Sean and I just said, please tell me you're going to add voice acting to this. And he said, well, if we have a, if we can find a publisher who'll do it for us. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do it. You know, like yeah. that, that was, it didn't take much convincing for, for, for me to, you know, to, and I asked, asked him to see a build and I, I love the rest of it. And I made a few suggestions, you know, as I do, um, which they took on board, one of which was to change the name. Yes, <laughs> which... I did think that. <laughs> I spoke to Sean actually at the um, at Adventure X and said, because um, it was in Cantamentum beforehand, which, was a bit of a mouthful and I never really... pronounced it. I was pronouncing yeah. it wrong for like a year yes. and I never spelled it the same way twice. <laughs> and um, I, I, I was unsure whether to do it. And finally, like uh, uh, Emily Morganti, you know, the, the lady who handles um, our, our PR stuff, she just, the first time I mentioned it to her, she's like, you're going to change that name. Right. I'm like, okay, I guess we will. <laughs> Cause we, we did the same for Gemini Rue. It was originally called Boreo Kudan Rue, which no one ever spelled correctly. And we changed it to Gemini Rue, which was a much better title. And um, we did, and the funny thing is, I think the excavation of Hobbs Barrow was their original title for the game. 
Oh, and okay. as we were talking about it, we were, we said it should be the something of Hobbes Barrow. And they said, well, actually, this was the original name. And we're like, oh, that's perfect. And so we we kept that. We just reverted it. So we technically didn't change the name so much as reverted it. So yeah, that was that was my one like publisher med executive meddling uh, moment. <laughs> take all the credit for it. <laughs> that, that yeah, I'll take the credit for that. I'll take the yeah. credit for that. <laughs> now that was actually a a massive massive success. So off the back of it that, was. did um have you seen an an increase in in people? being interested in in blackwell and gemini and, and all the all, all off the back of that because it was so big yeah yeah well I, I was really surprised i mean I, i'm happy obviously and i could i i never know why something does well i never know why something does poorly um there's i mean it's a good game it's a great game but often that's not enough there's a confluence of things that you know, I think it, it was also on the heels of Monkey Island, and people were very interested in adventure games at the time. Um, it was also just before uh, just before October. People were looking for spooky games. Who knows? Um, but I think the fact that it was popular, like every uh, the way I always see it, is there's never like one game that's the big watershed moment. There are games that are like that can take off, but often it's that they take advantage of all the groundwork that's already there. So it's like, yeah, like uh, the old games like the fans of the old games help push the new ones while fans of the new games help push the old stuff and so it's this synergistic thing that is the, the main reason why we're still in business <laughs> so i i yes there was always a there was a, like a big you know this game did really well and is very popular um and so they check that out and they're they check out the rest of cloak and dagger stuff they check out the rest of my stuff and um you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, definitely. It's, yeah. Uh, I've definitely noticed, you know, but that, that's the case with every game. We release a new game, our every, all the older games see a resurgence that happens all the time. Yeah. But this time, it, this game did so well that I just see more of it now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, one such game that is going to be pretty big coming up soon, hopefully, uh, again, is, uh, is Primordia uh, has just announced that they're going to have a, Hey, oh, the movie! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It, that's that. Just, just, just to be clear, like they just exercised the option to buy the rights. Yes, that's like the first step <laughs> out of like a oh, a million. You know, that's just yeah. the first step. It's like they, they, like they own the rights. We want to do this. You know, whether or not they go forward with it, you know, they want to. They, they seem pretty keen. Uh, and I'm not personally involved. That's all Wormwood. They yeah. made the deal, you know, uh, and now like, and they basically made the deal and now it's in the hands of the film company. Um, so I know nothing about it because like the deal I have with the, the developers I publish is that, you know, Wajedi has the sales rights. We sell the game um, and that they, they still own the IP. So they yeah. can sell merch, they can sell stuffies, they can do whatever they want and they don't have to involve me. And that's, that's fine. Yeah. But um, yeah, well, well done to the to those guys because that's a that's a massive a massive step, and it, yeah, the, it's huge, it's, it's I, amazing, it's fantastic. Um, um, what I did off the back of that, I put a uh, just a question out on Twitter saying like, what other point and click adventure games would people like to see, see as 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 films? Um, now obviously a lot of people said Monkey Island, Full Throttle, a lot of people said the Blackwell series, but not as a film, but as like a Netflix series. And for I me, noticed that's that, really yeah. Awesome. Well, well, because it's very, um, it's suited to an episodic format, like, and and that's that's how I, I designed it. Originally, I designed it as one big game, but then I realized it was that was just too big. But I'm like, you know what? Uh, this could be split up into several games. I can make this go as long as I wanted. Uh, I ended up only doing five because each game got progressively more complex than the last. Um, but yeah, that's how I, I designed it. So it's perfectly suited for an episodic series, and that's how episodic series should be done rather than a 10 hour movie split up into you know um 10 parts each episode should be its own story that kind of that that pushes the narrative like there there can be like a long running arc but each episode can be its own standalone story that's what that's what it should be yeah and that's how i always designed blackwell each each game was its own unique story there were threads that carried over but the main story was unique to that game and resolved resolved within that game, um, and I think that suits well. Uh, that's uh, it suits an episodic format very well, and that's that's kind of the format that I'm very comfortable in. I did the same with Unavowed. I'm doing the same with Old Skies. That was what my talk at Adventure X was about two years ago. Um, so yeah, it's it, it, it would work very well as a as a Netflix style series. 
Yeah. Um, would you consider, um, like, is there an option for people, for <laughs> any film directors listening to this, uh, for someone to go to you and say, hey, I really enjoy um, Unavowed, you know, can we option it for, for a film? Is that something that you'd consider? I'm willing to sell out if anyone's willing to buy in. <laughs> I, I mean, the thing is, it's like, often I've gotten emails like this before. And usually it's just pipe dreams. It never goes anywhere. Yeah. And I typically just ignore them. Wormwood did not ignore them. They actually pursued it. And it took five years. <laughs> but they, they got there. And I, I I just don't have the mental bandwidth to like to 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 try to negotiate for five years. Um if I if I was approached with a serious offer, then then yeah. yeah. I like I said, I'm totally willing to sell out. If anyone wants to buy in, I'm I'm game. I'm for sale. No no problem there. There you all. go. I'll, I'll leave I'll leave your email down below in the description. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, I willing to sell out. It's on my business card. <laughs> I'll just call out the title of this video and then sure. just that yep. Sure. Willing to sell out. <laughs> uh, I actually live in the same town as the um, the director of um, Rogue One, Gareth Edwards. He came from he went to the school around the corner from me, and I've met her a few times as well. So next time I bump into him, I will say yeah. There's a there's a, a computer game series that Go you might on. be interested in, but uh, yeah, that's my that's my my one claim to fame. When we first spoke about three years ago, we went into your whole back catalogue, and it's quite you know it's a it's a lengthy interview. So if anyone wants to check out that, I'll leave that the link down below. But what I want to ask is, um, so you've got old skies on the go at the minute. You've got um, Nighthawks on at the minute, and now when those two end. You've got to have something else. So what, I have a big ticking... idea of something I might want to do, but I don't want to give it any more thought until I'm done with old skies. I just can't. That 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 way lies danger. Is when like you go, oh, this other idea is so great. Now I hate the thing I'm working on. I just can't go there. Yeah. Um, uh, I there's nothing else on. I've always been very lucky. How just stuff just either falls into my lap or I find another project or i just work on something of my own i know ben like i said ben wants to work on something so what will probably happen is that you know he'll be doing that and he'll be focused on writing that and he'll be obviously be doing the art for it as well um and so that'll give me you know i'll be helping him out with it i'm kind of i'll help him out with like narrative and stuff and i'll, I'll be involved and i'll help with programming or whatever but while he's doing that that'll kind of give me the freedom and the time to just sort of hash out whatever I want my, might want to do next or if a, another game comes along that I'd be interested in publishing you know I'll, I'll focus on that there's never any rhyme or reason to how I do things uh, I've just been uh, very lucky so yeah, um, yeah. excellent yeah, well yeah. We, we look forward just pray to that continues yeah <laughs> yes I mean you've been in this business now for um, 18 years coming up to 18 years I think 2006 yes was when the shiver was released so um uh -huh. I think it's uh, I think it's going right. I think you've probably got a few years left. Oh God, I hope I have more than that. <laughs> <These games, laughs> the problem these games take so long to make, and that's, that's sort of the I, I, I said earlier how each game seems to be taking longer. And you know, I don't know how much longer I'll be doing this. I've been doing it for almost twenty years, and uh, who knows how many of these I got left in me. So I, I, I want to do this for as long as I can. So I have to think: Do I want to spend many more, like a lot of years, on one project, or do I want to? spend less time on more projects you know do i want to get more out there or do i want to get fewer better things out there and that's always the, the 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 thought that goes in my head because um you know 20 years ago it seemed like i had all the time in the world and now it's like oh wow i gotta oh this got dark didn't it wow this is this, is, this turned into a big stare into the abyss <laughs> ask me something funny yeah <laughs> um now the uh the uh uh the landscape, the gaming landscape, nearly twenty years ago, like I said, eighteen years ago, was vastly different to what it to what it is now. Um, if you were to start making a brand new game today, um, and let's say it's going to be out in the next year or so, um, but you don't have the Wadget I name behind you, how, have you got any advice for for any up and coming developers to, um not just make a good game but mainly to get it noticed because one thing that as a content creator myself i get given a lot of demos and things like that um mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really make an effort in the marketing they put a lot of time and effort into making a great game and then and then it's and then suddenly three days later it's out and it's and it's unless unless someone picks it up or they're good at marketing yeah like, i've noticed that secret? a lot of especially adventure games they tend they're putting like their first games are amazing 
the the production value, the length, the complexity, everything about it is just polished to a mirror shine. But it's their first game. They don't know how to sell a game. And they, I, I often say the one thing I did accidentally smart, I, I didn't and say, I didn't say to myself, I'm doing it this way because that's the smart way to do it. It was just, it was the only way I could do it was I made very small projects. Admittedly, the, and I was able to uh, get the feedback on them and make my, and incorporate that into my next project pretty quickly. But at the same time, the market was a lot different back then. So I don't know how well that would fly now. I think you could make smaller, cheaper games and and get feedback and iterate off of them. But at the same time, the market is so oversaturated. I don't know if how much of a splash they'd make. I, I do think that... Um, the, the marketing, I, I do firmly believe that you, you need to start small and start, start, start small. You got to start small because you need to, you need to figure out how this, how to make it work for you. You need to figure out what you're good at making, what people are responsive to, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. And if you're blowing all your energy and all your time and all your money on one big epic project, you're going to be exhausted at the end of it when most likely it doesn't do well. Yeah. And that, and I think that is, that's the worst thing. Like I, my first game I made in a, in a few months and it did not sell all that great. Um, yeah. It took me a while to kind of get to the point where I could be financially stable, but I was able to kind of figure out what worked and what didn't. And I was able to get there faster because I was able to get stuff out faster. Of course, I was younger and had more energy, mm -hmm. but, and there's that as well. <laughs> but yeah. I, 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 I'm not really, I'm kind of dancing around the fact that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, The market's so different now. I, I have no idea. If I was starting now, I have no idea how I would start because yeah. everything I do is based on the fact that I've got almost 20 years worth of like reputation and fan base to build on. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I would start now. Yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. Nice, honest answer. Um, I think we're going to leave it there, Dave. I think we've had all the information we're going to squeeze out of you. No release date yet, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, and no, no, no new projects in the work. Um, mm. so um, where can we find all of your games apart from Steam? Obviously, where's the best place to go? Um, WadgetEyeGames.com. Wadget with a J. I'm very online. I'm easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google WadgetEye. Google Dave Gilbert Games. You'll find me. It's yeah. not, I'm I'm not hard to find. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your for your time again, and uh, we'll have you on when when Old Skies and Nighthawks is on again. And good luck with the remaining development on on all those. And uh, well, yeah. thank you, thank you.